And we are going to start this hour with breaking news. We have just learned new details on this fire in Sarah Mesa. Now that you see more daylight, you can see the damage here. Officials tell us it started in that carport right out front. Oof, look at that. They still don't know what caused the fire. Two vehicles completely destroyed here. A live look at the scene. The fire is out. Crews still on the scene, though, making sure no hot spots start between that carport and the apartment complex. You can see the bottom windows, top windows singe there, so quite a bit of damage to those uh, bottom and top floor units. Happening at the 8700 block of Hurlbut Street. Officials told us moments ago everyone did get out safely. No serious injuries to report, but quite a bit of damage at this apartment complex at Sarah Mesa. We have a crew on the scene. Any updates we get we will bring to you here. But right now we want to get to our other top story. More migrants arriving at the border as we get closer to the end of Title 42. Take a look at the difference between last week and yesterday. How many migrants out there? It is 6 a.m. here on this Tuesday. Glad you are joining us. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Irampur, and the pandemic era immigration policy known as Title 42 certainly making headlines for several days here. It ends just before midnight on Thursday. So here's that countdown two days, 17 hours from now. Officials are getting ready for a spike in crossings. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol is live along the border fence with details on this app for asylum seekers that's uh, having some issues here, right, Dana Marie? That's right. Good morning, Eric and Netta. As the sun has come up, we're here at the fence. As you can see right behind me, hundreds and hundreds of migrants uh, waking up either in tents, uh, huddling around a small fire. There are women and children, as we can see, across the border there. But one thing uh, that they've added to their plate is that CBP-1 app that seemingly is not working. Now, this is all part um, of a component revamped by a border strategy President Biden unveiled in January. But since January, the app has failed these migrants repeatedly with glitches, and those issues continue to be a headache. We spoke to a Colombian man named Eduardo who says it's just one of thousands of migrants hoping to get an appointment. He tells us he downloaded the app, but the application keeps crashing. Most have grown increasingly frustrated by their inability to secure to secure one of the several hundred coveted appointments distributed by the U.S. each morning. Most migrants are struggling to find phone chargers and connectivity. Some hardly have supplies, much less a working phone. Now, volunteers tell us they've been helping with food distribution, even phone chargers, hoping that uh, if this app does work for some people, they can get through and get an appointment for that processing to get started as soon as possible because we've been here at the border for a very long time covering the uh, end of Title 42, speaking to many of these migrants who say that a lot of them haven't eaten in a long time. They don't have a lot of uh, even water or places to go to the bathroom or uh, but as you can see right here, it is a tough situation. A lot of them only having these small silver blankets to keep them warm. Uh, of course, we're going to keep you updated, but right now the glitches continue with that um, most Mobile app, hoping that many of the migrants can get processed here soon. I'll send it back to you in the studio. Muy pesado, duro. Yo tenía mucho miedo. And that is a mother from Ecuador who traveled here alone. She had her three young girls with her. She says the journey here was scary with days of hunger, nights of really cold temperatures, but she is escaping crime and violence in her home country. This morning we're seeing more and more children showing up at the border. You saw a lot of that in the video. <coughs> Excuse me. Yesterday, Border Patrol distributed green wristbands to migrants used to determine who should be processed first. According to Customs and Border Protection, vulnerable populations, that includes women and children, are given precedence. Meantime, Texas Governor Greg Abbott warning about the dangers of lifting Title 42. President Biden is laying down a welcome mat to people across the entire world saying that the United States border is wide open. That's Governor Abbott there saying President Biden's border policy is going to cause a catastrophic disaster in the United States. Abbott says he has deployed a new National Guard unit and the Texas Tactical Border Force to these hot spots along the border. Meantime, 1,500 active duty military personnel will start arriving at the border tomorrow, one day before Title 42 ends. So here are some of the details there. This morning, we're learning troops will not have direct contact with migrants and they will not help with processing them. Instead, they'll help with data entry, 
warehousing support, and detection and monitoring support efforts. The goal is to free up Border Patrol agents to conduct their duties. And this morning, we're working for you to find out how the end of Title 42 will impact travelers. Of course, so many of us go from San Diego into Tijuana and back and forth. Well, the U.S. Consulate in Tijuana says you should plan for longer wait times and possible closures. They say make sure your car is in good condition and that you have enough gas to wait in those long traffic delays. Also bring water, snacks, any essential medication along with you. A former San Diego County Sheriff's deputy is set to appear in court for the first time today. 51 year old Jose Soto is accused of possessing child pornography. He was arrested on Friday. He's also charged with possession of an assault weapon. Soto was with the department almost 25 years. He most recently worked at the South Bay Courthouse. And this morning, things are back to normal at Palomar College in San Marcos. After a lockdown there, the Sheriff's Department received a call about shots fired at a nearby sports complex last night. But the Union Tribune reports deputies did not find any evidence of shooting. The incident is under investigation. This morning we are learning more about the eight victims of the Texas mall shooting over the weekend. Three members of the same family were killed, including a three year old. Their six year old son was the lone survivor. At least three of the victims were small children. Meantime, we're hearing from a survivor who hid with other shoppers during the shooting. We were um, just in the closet trying not to be heard crying. Praying. Wow, unimaginable. CBS News has learned the gunman enlisted in the Army in 2008, but did not finish basic training and was terminated after three months due to physical or mental conditions. He later worked as an armed and licensed security guard and did pass a background check. Investigators believe he may have been motivated by far right extremist views. Activists demanding Texas lawmakers pass a bill that raises the age for purchasing assault weapons to 21. Protesters gathered at the Texas State Capitol yesterday here. The bill passed in the House, but Texas Governor Greg Abbott has spoken out against it. This morning now, an update for you in North County. Hey, all lanes of State Route 78 finally open. A sinkhole opened up in the middle of March that caused, it was caused by, I should say, heavy rains and the aging culverts. Well, Caltrans spent several weeks on the westbound lanes first, then completed repairs now finally on the eastbound lanes. So you don't have to worry about those detours anymore. I know that set a lot of people back almost hour to two hours uh, as they were trying to get around. So let's check in with Evan here. It's nice to see that the weather has cleared up enough for crews to get out there. Yeah, finally, people are able to make their normal commute uh, if that was the path that they took. We're watching as those clouds start to break apart here on our Tuesday morning. More dense marine layer to start off the day than what we saw yesterday. Tomorrow could even get a little bit of drizzle attached to it. A few hundredths of an inch if that's nothing too major. But what we're seeing is that temperatures are cooling down too as that trough of low pressure moves in our direction. So that's only going to be a trend that we hold on to through tomorrow because after tomorrow into Thursday and the weekend, that's when we start to see a warming trend and a clearing trend as well, shaping things up very nicely just in time for your Mother's Day. 64 along the coast this afternoon, 66 inland, 57 over the mountaintops. Here's the uh, Mount Soledad camera right now. 554 was that sunrise, so although we are about 15 minutes out from it, we are still working through quite a few of those clouds. This is in contrast to yesterday. Those clouds broke apart beautifully very quickly in the morning. Now we're going to hold on to them a little longer today, longer into tomorrow with that drizzle that we could see. And then by the time we get to uh, the end of the week, we'll see less dense marine layer clouds, more sunshine uh, peeking through. Tomorrow is our best opportunity for rain. It climbs up to 36% of a chance and then drops all the way down as we head into the upcoming weekend. Most of our models do show that this morning, sure, there may be a bit of mist out there. But for the most part, we are dry and just working through those clouds. When we run these models through tomorrow, we have better indication of more widespread mist, light rain, drizzle, all that in the forecast. But then a beautiful Mother's Day weekend will be on hand as a ridge of high pressure builds. Let's take a look at traffic here at 610. Look at your border wait times from the CBP website. Right now it is a 160 minute wait for the general line at the San Ysidro port of entry. Uh, just slightly faster getting through the Otay Mesa port of entry. It'll take you 90 minutes in total, so an hour and a half through the Otay Mesa port, uh, but do keep in mind that uh, there is uh, quite a long wait compared to yesterday. I'll send things back to you too.